Right, onwards to find Hercules. Hello. Yeah, me too, me too. It's a really special place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really good. Welcome to the channel. We are Graham and Ellie. We are Wizard in the Wild. Absolutely gorgeous. I could stay here all day. You left us last time crossing the amazing Burneray Causeway. We are now on North Uist and we're on our way to the Museum and Art Centre at Loch Maddy. Museum and Arts Centre. We started with a look around at the well-stocked gift shop and it's always nice to see things made in the local area. <laughs> and always it's nice to see some tempting books. <laughs> Pucker teas are one of my favourites. I was particularly keen on the Highland Cow but I did resist. At the time of visiting, there was an exhibition about the music of North Uist through the ages. It included exhibits of the music, the instruments, and also the influences on the music, such as poetry. A poet called Pauline Pryor Pitt runs poetry evenings at the museum and has helped many other artists to publish their poetry. It was also interesting to discover that the origins of Gaelic music came from the sound of bagpipes. In Gaelic music, the voice is the primary, primary instrument for the music, and also it tries to replicate the sounds of nature. That could be like bird song or the sound of the sea. There are also some modern musical instruments in the exhibition, including an acoustic guitar used by the Scottish band Runrig. This amazing outfit was worn by Scottish singer Julie Fowlis for the cover of her album Alterum. It's created from vintage fabrics, milk cartons and found objects. Alterum is Latin for the other one or the alternative. There was certainly lots to see in the museum and the exhibition centre. There was an art installation called On Sonorous Seas by Scottish artist Mari Killin and it was created with a group of other artists. It was inspired by a whale carcass which was washed up from the sea and the whale skull in fact forms a big part of the exhibition. There's a large piece of art called Osury, based on final resting places, for bones actually, and also podcasts you can listen to, poetry you can read, and a film presentation. Graham and I had quite different reactions to the exhibition. I found it very poignant and sad and a little bit disturbing, as it was beautiful but kind of uncomfortable too. Graham actually wasn't keen on it at all. That's not to say he doesn't like art. We've both enjoyed trips to the Tate Modern in the past. It just wasn't his cup of tea. So I suppose in a way, at least the artist had had 
some sort of reaction. Just a short walk from the Art Centre car park is a mosaic sculpture and a tide sculpture, both of which I had seen on Instagram, so I wanted to have a quick look. That's the walk up from the Art Centre, and we found the sculpture. This is it. It's a mackerel, otherwise known as a dead mackerel on the rocks. This was created in 1996 by artist Rosalind Waits and it's five metres long and it's intended to reflect the importance of fishing to the economy and it's made with materials all found on the nearby shoreline. That includes rocks, pebbles, mussel shells and some worn shards of uh, coloured glass. Quite beautiful actually. And there goes the Loch Maddy Ferry on its way back to Uig on Skye. You can just see the bow door closing. I think that's the MV Hebridean, I think. And this is the high tide, low tide art installation. Looks like half a melon, doesn't it? This was made by Christine Bashir. It was also built with the help of the pupils from Loch Maddy School. Evidently the structure is made of steel and the frame is covered in concrete. The hollow interior is filled with salt which is drawn out to sea at high tide through the small opening. The emphasis on salt is to do with how the fish were packed in barrels with salt ready to export. Bashir wanted to reflect the history together with the proximity of the sea with its dramatic tidal surges. What do you think about this piece of art? Be honest and do leave me a comment about this. I'm really interested in what people think. I find it a little bit strange in ways I don't really want to go into. And there goes the ferry off back to Skye. I hope you've all had a nice time on the islands here. Bye. Well, after all that lovely art and culture, Ellie wants to have a little bit of uh, retail therapy. So we're heading for Shoreline Stoneware. It's under 10 miles from Loch Maddy to Shoreline Stoneware, so it won't take long. Louise Cook, who owns the pottery and gallery, makes all of the items she sells during the winter. And then, during the tourist season, she'll sell them in the shop. Every piece of shoreline stoneware pottery is handcrafted and captures texture from natural materials and found objects collected along the Atlantic shores of Uist and Barra. These are the items we brought home with us, along with a few bits and pieces for family. What a great place to learn how to ride a bike. Well, it is until it crashes into the van. Don't say that. Nearby there is a burial chamber called Parpalanki. We're going to have a quick look at that now. It's only a mile or so up the road. Right, we've parked Merlin up here. We're going to have a look at this uh, chambered cairn called Barpalange. I have to say it does look a little run down. I've seen some online beautiful photographs of this car park with its wooden carvings but it's all been left to fall apart really. This is my first experience on the Outer Hebrides of seeing an ancient monument not being kept in pristine condition. It's not until we get to the cairn that we realise why. Let's go and take a look. Another hill. Another hill. As Ellie's just said to me, we're off up another hill. Seems to be a lot of them around here on this trip. Ooh. 
evidently you could go inside it but there's been a collapse so I'm not sure if you can at the moment we'll have a look anyway I later read up that the collapse was as long ago as 2011 that explains the lack of loving care to the car park area big shame hope they sort it out soon very disappointed to not be able to go into the can but uh, obviously safety prevails but I did manage to get a couple of pictures from the internet as I know you'd all like to see what it was like inside this Neolithic can is around 5,000 years old and it's believed that there's possibly a second or even a third chamber deep inside <laughs> Well, we might not have been able to get into the cairn, but the girls are certainly loving this walk, so it's definitely worthwhile. Look at Jazz, I can't believe her. Graham tells me I've got to keep an eye on her. You are joking. Look at her, look at her go. I mean, and she sort of blends in again, doesn't she? Um, she's just disappearing off up that path. Jazz, Jazz. J I can't even follow her there. She's being ridiculous. Oh yeah, turn and look at me. I think I should have gone with Graham. He went the easy way with Myra and Luna on the big path, but no, her ladyship has to go all through the heathers. Well, we're heading back to Merlin now. We're going to end this vlog here, and yes, I know that I promised a bear hunt, but I don't want to lose the footage of that by putting it into this vlog where I would have to cut it short. So, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait to see that next week, and it's worth waiting for. Hope you enjoyed watching what we did today. If you're enjoying following our adventures in Scotland, please do like, subscribe, and most importantly, do remember to comment. More comments will help us to keep producing more vlogs for you on YouTube, so do keep them coming. <laughs>